Um, welcome to the Friday, March 4th meeting of the Westwood School Building Committee. I am going to start with a roll call attendance. Ken Aries. Here. Josh Bomber. Here. Brian Baer. Here. Allison Borchers. Here. Tom Carey. Here. Chris Coleman. Here. John Cummings. Here. I don't see Charlie Donahue. Um, I don't see Pam Dukeman. Mary Kate Ferreira. Here. Jen Flanders. Here. Abby Hanscom. Here. There she is. <laughs> Lama Jean Baptiste. Here. Here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gotcha. Um, I don't see Josepha. Matt Kuklins. Here. I don't see Carol. Michelle Miller. Here. I know Tony can't join. Emily Parks. Here. And I think Amanda is unable to join as well. And then Mike Walsh. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, I'd like to recognize the live stream available online at www.westwood.k12.ma.us slash live. To provide real-time public access to the activities of the School Building Committee in accordance with an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. This meeting is also being recorded for later broadcast on Westwood Media Center's platforms. And as always, we thank Westwood Media Center for everything they do for us and for the town. Um, okay. The chair's report. So open meeting law update. As you know, uh, Governor Baker had put had extended the COVID-19 measures through April through March 31st to allow Zoom meetings for open meeting. Um, I think on February 15th, he further extended that to July 15th, 2022. So we are going to continue to be virtual. Um, so as you can see at the bottom of your agenda, the next three meetings, April 1st, May 13th, and June 10th will all be virtual. So it's a little bit longer going through the votes, but I think it's worth it um, for just ease of access for everybody. Um, project update, we have done the 90% uh, submission to the cost estimators. Um, I believe we are hoping to hear back from them um, this in the next couple of weeks. And so we will have a cost update on Friday, April 1st. Everyone needs to cross their fingers that we are still relatively on budget. Um, but as you recall from last week's discussion and which will follow up in this week's, we are creating that buffer. So in a, the budget, so we're hopeful that that will ease things along. Um, I think that's it for the project update. So I'm going to move right into the discussion items. Um, so for discussion, we're gonna do two things today. The first is we're gonna follow up on two open issues we had from last, last meeting. And the second is we're gonna determine the order of alternates. Um, just a quick reminder of everybody, we had discussions last month um, about two things. First, whether or not to include the playground equipment as an alternate. Um, there were subsequent meetings uh, since that with, with, with the district administration and with the playground group as we're calling them. Um, so we'll get an update on that. And then also, as you remember, we had a, a discussion about the shading element on the front of the building, those, um, those horizontal steel structures and whether or not to keep them given the cost versus the aesthetic and the design. So we're gonna have a follow-up on that as well. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Rob uh, to, to walk us through all this stuff. Great, thanks, Maya. Uh, <clears throat> so as Maya mentioned, uh, this is our the you know, topics of review for today, the playground, the shading element, uh, we'll be talking about the order of ultimate, alternates and, um, and the schedule look ahead. Uh, so at the end of this, we'd really like to confirm um, the, the final list of alternates and, and what order uh, you would like them to be in. So just walking through the playground, you know, this is the overall site. Um, the playground is back in this area here. When we look at the uh, site elements, some of the different um, site furnishings that we have located around the site I include some bike racks uh, down by the fields and up by the building, benches, 
these precast bollards over here um, out in front, um, some uh, trash and recycling receptacles in the back. Uh, we've got this rain garden with um, some interpretive signage, uh, which we're also planning to, to locate um, in other parts of the, of the site as well, there, uh, just to kind of highlight some of the um, stormwater and rain garden elements. Um, and uh, so when we think about the, the playground, there are you know, five primary elements that we've been incorporating into the overall design. Um, the social, physical, cognitive, communication, sensory, it's not just about the playground equipment itself. Um, and so when we look at the overall playground, it's, it really encompasses this entire area. Um, so, you know, we have this sort of grassy uh, lawn area over here to the, to the far left. We have some hardscape play area um, and, and, and a half court basketball, the swings, the playground equipment, of course, um, and then uh, some planters and picnic tables, um, water and sand tables. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of a variety here that will offer um, uh, a great opportunities for, you know, kids with different interests and, um, and different types of play in mind. So we reviewed a couple options with this subgroup, uh, this, this playground subgroup. And um, after some, some really good discussion, the, the group decided that they we're leaning towards option two, which is um, this, which is what you're seeing on the screen here. And it's made up of uh, a number of different, you know, playground elements. Um, so one of the um, pieces of feedback that we had received was, you know, there was some items that indicated on here that there wasn't as much interest in, you know, for example, the screen talk tubes and uh, maybe the sensory dome. And, um, and, and really wanted to take a closer look at some of the, the actual playground equipment itself. So since we've had this discussion, um, we've sent along a list of um, product information uh, from the different manufacturers and also provided a list of example um, playgrounds around the area uh, that could be visited, you know, that, that have some of these features. Um, and I, I believe Emily um, took uh, a tour there with an even smaller subgroup um, to, to check them out. Um, and I'll, I'll let um, Emily speak to that if you'd like. Uh, well, it was a very, it was a very small subgroup. It was my two children. So we spent a day touring the playgrounds of Boston to the six places that um, Deb recommended. And um, so I, I have spent more time looking at playground equipment than I, or, or with more scrutiny than I ever thought I would. So um, I am gonna share the, some of my thoughts with the playground subcommittee as we start to look at some of those cut sheets. Yeah, so, um, so one of the big takeaways from that um, was that, you know, we've been trying to be kind of budget conscious and, and be thinking about you know, how far do we go with the playground equipment and, and so on. And, um, and so some of these items we had identified as in, in red as, um, you know, alternates that would be beyond, you know, the, the, the $300,000 budget that we had. And so some of that review um, is going to happen with the subgroup is to also kind of nail down really what's desired, what's needed. Um, and uh, I believe the recommendation from that subgroup and and Emily, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, really was that the playground is, an, is really a, a basic important aspect of the project and um, really shouldn't, you know, there isn't any part of it really that should be treated as an alternate. Either we, we um, you know, include it as a whole or, you know, we don't include, uh, there's no interest in including any part of it as an alternate component. Do I have that right? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, we we feel like the playground is just a really important, you know, aspect of the school. And, um, you know, based on our discussions, we want to make sure that the playground is really designed holistically from the start. And we don't want to have to create a design where things could be fit in 
after the fact. Yeah. Um, so uh, before I move on to the next topic, uh, does anyone have any questions or any discussion points that we want to talk about regarding the playground? Rob, can you sorry. remind us, sorry, can you just remind everyone of the cost? Um, I agree with, with Emily that this is, it's, it should, you know, we had discussed putting it in as an alternate. I don't, I agree that it should not be, but I'd like everyone to understand the cost. Sure. So, um, you know, going into the 60% um, cost estimates, the, the cost was around 300,000. And that's where, that's, that's where these, all of these green items are. Um, and, you know, being mindful of trying to keep it under budget, um, you know, we, we were trying to, to, to bring that number down a bit further and, um, and had eliminated some items. But um, based on the information that we've gotten, you know, the, the actual decision on where that budget lies is really going to be up to the, the subgroup. Um, so right now, as I mentioned, the, the green items, um, basically all of, all of these minus these red items here, um, fall under the base bid. The, the red additional items uh, encompass probably another $100,000. So the, the potential is that it could fall somewhere between three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars um, dollars So just wanted to let everyone be aware of that. I just have a quick question. Thank you for the presentation. I, I saw how you had a birdhouse in there. And uh, yes. I have somewhat of a bias because my kids used to go to Hill Reservation after school and they knew every bird in Hill Reservation. Uh, they taught them. And I've seen a, a television show where a school had about 10 birdhouses out behind the school with numbers on each of them. Uh, and the kids learned what birds were staying in what birdhouses. And it got them interested in nature and, and, and that kind of stuff. So I think it was, I don't know if it's possible to have more birdhouses or if we could get into the academic thing where the kids are learning about birds because they're there in the numbers. And then I had another question, it's a general other question for, for us in that with all this beautiful uh, equipment being brought uh, to our new school, uh, is there any chance that we could begin to think about uh, some of the other schools that aren't new and aren't gonna be getting this, that maybe we could begin to think about outside of this project uh, what we're learning about all this equipment, maybe bringing some of these things to some of the other schools uh, next year, maybe in a different budget. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Good points. I hey, have Rob, a couple. Hey, hey, Rob, it's Ken. What are you using for a service underneath all this equipment? So this is a, uh, a poured in place rubberized surface. Um, so it's, it's seamless. Um, we've used it. You know, we've we've gone through a series of projects where we've um, tried out different materials, and ultimately, this is uh, the most durable um, material, easiest to maintain, and um, and easiest for students to traverse. You know, they're um, so um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a rubberized, uh, poured in place surface. Yeah, the, like rubber mats. Yeah, I have it. It's good because I have it installed in a few playgrounds around town and it's it's worked out great okay good i think mary kate has been trying to talk for a <laughs> couple <laughs> times <laughs> um i have i have a couple questions or comments one actually goes along with the rubber mats um the first is with the school street playground which the westwood young women's club had fundraised and completely covered the cost of after it was installed there was some um, difference of opinion in how to keep it maintained. So when when it was kind of my job to scope the playground every once in a while and look for things that needed to be repaired. And when I would contact DPW on a few things, they felt that they couldn't touch the playground equipment because it would void the warranty. But then when I would contact the, the company who put the playground in, they said that that wasn't the case, that they had never had that with any other town that once they installed the playground, the town was always responsible for the maintenance of it. So that's one thing I think 
need to be figured out ahead of time this time because it was a lot of that what ended up being hap happening was the playground equipment kind of was broken for quite a while before we figured out how to get things fixed and then I my second comment on that we sure we have our playgrounds inspected every year and as mm -hmm. repairs come up we we do them just for safety reasons okay so at that time there was some miscommunication about um the person who was in charge of DPW was concerned that if they touched the playground equipment that they would void the warranty. So that's just one thing I think, figure out the warranty yeah, stuff I, with the company uh, before it gets installed. Yeah, if I could add just one item to that. Um, I think that's a great point. Um, typically, in the first year is when you typically don't want to do anything to it without reaching out to the manufacturer first. Um, you know, the, the it, the anything with the building and the site really falls under the contractor's responsibility during that first year after completion. So, um, you know, if there's anything that happens, really, we, we would go, reach out to the contractor and maybe that's where some of the, the misconception happened. I, I'm not sure on, on your project, but um, the first year is really uh, for the contractor to deal with. Um, and then after that, you know, it turns over to the school district typically. Okay. And then my next comment was um, the rubber mats was one of the things that um, we had an issue with. They were very large square shaped rubber mats to make sure that it was wheelchair accessible and they kept popping out of place. And um, it, it seemed like they would get repaired, but then they would be popped out of place very shortly after that. So I wasn't sure if they have improved that, if it's now bigger mats that won't pop as much or because it ended up that it was not wheelchair accessible at all because they were so popped out of place that it was it was um, like almost like taking a step up for each mat. So so this is more of a poured in place um, product rather than OK, mats. OK, perfect. It ends up feeling like a, a spongy epoxy floor, all, all seamless. Okay, great. Great. I see Chris Coleman has his hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, just in, um, in response, as, as far as what you're doing, I just want to make sure so I understand this. So the green is what's moving forward and the and the red is what's in question. Is that correct? Or what may be uh, paused or not done at different phases or different options? Yeah, um, so I would say the, since the playground uh, subgroup, you know, just first looked at, at all of the different pieces and we just sent them all of the information on the different um, uh, parts and pieces of the site, they are going to be looking at all of it and, um, and then kind of finalizing a, a final list. Um, you know, I think some of the major elements are uh, definitely included, like, you know, these slides and the and these zero balls and so forth. But uh, as far as the individual parts and pieces, we're asking that subgroup to make a final decision on. Yeah, I don't think we've really finalized anything yet on the okay. playground uh, equipment. Just the idea that we're going to keep a healthy budget for it, um, as opposed to sort of removing part of the budget and moving it to an alternate. That's that's really what we're talking about today, not okay. specific pieces. Uh, has anyone spoken to recreation? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. I, I'm not sure if recreation, we can certainly reach out to them. Um, I don't, Emily, do they typically use our playgrounds? I know they use the fields. It's, it's not a matter of using the playground, just a matter of their experience with playgrounds and the use of the elements within the playground. So for example, the sensory dome is a smaller version of that tree on the school street playground. Mary Kate brought up the um, school street playground, and that seems to be one of the more popular elements. Yeah. In the playground, yep. um, just as a suggestion, but since uh, Mary Kate did bring up the school street playground, we are, um, we do have the pour in place that we have a request in this year's capital fund to do the same thing that you're proposing or something very similar to what you're proposing for this playground. Um, and uh, DPW and recreation do deal with the maintenance. I don't know yeah. what happened back then, but I can just tell you what happens now. Okay. All right, great. Well, it's a good idea. Maybe we'll reach out to them. Yeah, I can um, do that. As Maya said, really, as far as we got was this idea of do we want part of the playground equipment to be an alternate 
or not? And the answer is no. So at this point, we'll start looking at actual pieces. Yeah. Um, what elements we want. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Brian. I was just wondering what's happening with the playground equipment that's currently at Hamlin. I don't think we've gotten that far. <laughs> is it is it fairly new? Is it can it be repurposed anywhere? Do we know? Uh, Matt, I'm going to call on Matt for this one. Matt, do you have any idea about that? Um, I don't know the how long the the equipment has been here, nor the ability to move it. I will say that the structure that we have out front, we did have to replace the slide uh, recently, and there was definitely some creative, not creative engineering, but having to, to figure out how to um, retrofit some pieces. So I don't know the movement of that and if it would with, be able to withstand the movement of it. Uh, Most of it is pretty outdated. I know the PTO had been looking to replace it for a long time, but was kind of holding off knowing um, that this project was coming down the pike. That's what I was thinking. I can't, I, I don't remember when the equipment was put in. We can look into that, but the fact that we can't remember, I think suggests it's been a while. Yes, I can say everything there is very old except one piece, the climbing structure, Mr. K. That was added because they had to remove a couple of pieces a few years ago because of bees nests. Um, the PTO raised funds to add that one climbing structure that's closest to the, um, I believe, like the fifth grade wing. That's a, that's a fairly new piece, but everything else has been there since before my kids have gone. Okay, helpful. All right. Um, to just oh. oh, go ahead. The um uh the majority of the equipment on the the Deerfield playground is um is, is fair, fairly old. Um, pre predates me with the exception of one um, uh, relatively small but brand new uh, climbing structure that the Deerfield PTO generously uh, supported and funded. Um, this that was installed this past summer. Um, but it's a relatively small small piece, and I imagine would be able to. Oh, we lost you, Josh. You went mute for some reason. Yeah, no, I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> uh, Maya, to follow up on, on that idea, like of, you know, hey, maybe is there anything reusable at Deerfield? Um, I always love the idea of trying to reuse something. But um, in that case, um, I think that might be part of a good discussion with REC in that they use Deerfield for, uh, for different programming. I mm -hmm. Don't know what's there, what's not, but they'd be able to say, hey, listen, is that an issue for uh, the town summer programs or whatever, if we were to touch Deerfield playground stuff. So probably just wanna add that to discussion there. Yep, yep, thank you, Michelle. Okay, anything else? Um, what, what are people's thoughts about the recommendation that we leave the playground budget whole and not move a portion of it to the alternate, um, as an alternate? Is everyone on board with that? Do people disagree with that? Um, that's, I think we might, uh, we're not, we don't necessarily have to take a vote on it um, because we've never actually removed it from the budget. So we don't have to take a vote to put it back in. But I did we just wanna make sure that if people did not, you know, wanted to sort of have that discussion as opposed to just the, the specific elements of the playground. Um, it's Jen. I think if you leave out certain pieces, the playground will look really empty. Like I'm just looking at like the supernova there. And if that's not there, there's just like a giant gap in the playground, which to me seems, seems a little odd. Yeah, and I think one of the things that, um, the landscape architect had said to the working to the working group was, you know, while it may physically be easy to add elements um, of the equipment after the fact, or sort of when you're designing, you would design with what you have. So if you don't, if you have equipment that's not in the base bid, you're not going to design for it. And that, and then if you try to add things in later, it might it might not work with the design. So I think that was another reason. Um, you know, both, both the importance of the playground to the school and the community, um, and also 
sort of the difficulty with the design piece of it, it was another reason as Jen, as you just pointed out, you'd have it, you'd either have to leave a hole <laughs> or you wouldn't design, you design it so that that piece, there'd be nowhere for it to go, I think. So. Oh yeah. To follow up on that. So if say, for example, these red elements were eliminated, so this gets re does this get redesigned? And if it does, does it mean that the playground actually gets smaller? Right, I think that's that was sort of Deb, the architect's point, the landscape architect's point is that she would design to the to the budget. So. Okay, so this would get redesigned what we're looking at. If we moved a portion of it to the alternates. I don't know. It, but I thought, the, I thought the red is, is being taken out. I think so. The so the, what's what's happening right now is that the subgroup is evaluating all of these elements and kind of saying yes, no, yes, no, um, and maybe there's other ones that aren't shown on here that they see that say, hey, we instead of this sensory dome, we really like this other element, and so once we get that kind of recommendation from the subgroup, then you know we may end up reshuffling a, a few of these or or changing the location a little bit, just depending on the size and the shape and, and the function of those pieces. So um, I think, you know, the, the K-1 playground is still going to be here. The older kids' play, play area is still going to be here. Um, but we may end up moving or shifting things around depending on what's selected. Okay, so as in that process, as they're still designed to the budget, so as some of these elements go in and out, there's probably also a cost relative to how big the whole surface is in general. Yes, if if some of the uh, equipment, for example, if, um, dictates that it needs a larger uh, fall zone, um, we, you know, we may need to increase the surface area. But I think, generally speaking, we're trying to stay within this so that we within this surface area uh, provided so that. Um, we don't increase that, you know, this, the, the, the cushion surface area is expensive. No, yeah, I was thinking decrease it. Not that we should, but if, like um, Jen said, if, if all this equipment's removed, it seems like the area is kind of large. Yeah, I think just for purposes of this discussion, we shouldn't focus on the red and the green squares here because um, we don't actually know exactly what equipment we're gonna, is gonna go in. Um, I think what we just the really the question in front of us today is is everyone on board with keeping the budget for whatever you know and whatever that can afford it will afford but keeping the budget um, for the playground as it was in the base bit originally and not moving a portion of it to the alternate I think I'm, we're getting a little sidetracked with the red and the green um, because none of this has been finalized so unless anyone has objections, unless anyone really thinks we should move a portion of this $300,000 budget to alternate, then I think, um, you know, we're certainly gonna have a lot more discussions about playground equipment as we move forward. I would keep it as a whole. Yeah, I, 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 support, I support the whole design being in the, in the base bid. I, yeah. would, the budget. I would keep it as designed. Keep yeah. it as whole. I, I, I'm going to change mine to keep the budget where it is. So if you want to take out the chimes because you think it's going to be too loud during the day, that's great. You still get the, the budget to put something else. Yes. In. Yep, exactly. All right. It sounds like we have a consensus on that. So um, I think, Rob, why don't we move on to the shading element? Okay. So at our last meeting, we, um, the, the school building committee decided to um, remove these from the two uh, west ends the, of the classroom, of each of the classroom the, wings. The back of the building, right? The, the back of the building, yep. Um, and yeah. this is the east side here and, uh, and decided to keep this and wanted to circle back on that and just you know, reconfirm this is the approach that um, everyone would like it is you know, to keep these in. We do have a couple other images. Um, There's a request, you know, pro to provide some images from further away, um, and so just wanted to circle back. So this is the view without the um, the, the shading element, um, and then 
Here's a view from further away. Uh, as you can see, they're not in this image here. And this is a view from the bus drop-off area. Um, you can see them here. And then this is a view without. And I think just for a re reminder, the it's about as it would if we did not have these shading elements, it would be a savings of about sixty thousand. Is that right? Correct. So I know we talked a little bit about this last time. What do people think? I think if you need to take out sixty seventy thousand dollars, this is where you go, and not the playground. Is I mean, is there anything else? There must be more somewhere tucked in there in your, your magic rod that if you needed to pull out, you could. But I wouldn't change the, the, the inside for the students. The school's for the students. So, so the playground yeah, so, is most important, and then the, as well as the classrooms and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to reiterate, um, I, I think based off of our last round of discussion and alternates and VE and everything else that we did in the last meeting, uh, I think between both Compass and Doran Whittier, we feel we're at a, a pretty comfortable spot in terms of the, the buffer that you have. I mean, um, I think as, as Brian had mentioned, you know, this, this buffer is really up to the up to you guys to decide how big or how small it is. Um, we're just throwing this out as an idea. So it's this isn't uh, something that is absolutely necessary for you guys to take. Um, you know, we're, we're just, uh, it's just a decision that, uh, really needs to be made now rather than later. Um, you know that it, it it just gets more difficult to to um, let's say I guess not so it's, it's not as difficult to remove later. But you know we're we're putting together drawings for it, and so we'd really like to kind of know now whether we want to, we need to fully detail this and document it or not. I I prefer the shading elements to be kept in. I think it has a nice relationship to. The canopy and the way that the whole entry and building faces the approach. I have to say that I, I agree with Brian. I feel like it is an important part of the aesthetic design of the front of the building. I certainly agree with you, John. I wouldn't choose this over the playground, but if we're if that's not actually the choice, right? Um, then I would say my preference is to keep this element. So I guess it, what I'm hearing is it has to do with how comfortable we are with the size of the buffer that we've created, right? What can, Rob, can you remind us of the numbers? Do you have those anywhere or do you know? <clears throat> Maybe Brian um, or Chin have that written, uh, in front of them. I had written down that was seventy thousand dollars difference. We saved one hundred and forty thousand by getting the two on the west side. No, yeah, I, I, I think it was correct. I think the overall buffer was in the again inclusive of potential soft cost reorganization on bid day, um, reducing some of those elements which may or may not be, um, you know, part of the appetite. It was around two point three million dollars. So again, you're talking about sixty thousand dollars in the grand scheme of things. Um, but some of those elements like reducing contingency or reducing FF and E budget to get to the 2.3 might not be something you want to do um, come bid day. So we were looking for elements that, you know, in the grand scheme of things potentially did not affect program as much um, like this element. Um, but again, it's, it's the committee's comfort, comfort level, level with that buffer. And again, the goal being just to give the project enough flexibility uh, on bid day through compiling a couple different cost saving measures to ensure that we're as best as we can coming in within the budget. What, what we don't want is for, for the group to make a decision on this and say, let's take it out. And then <clears throat> the bids all come in great. And then say, can we get that back in again? <laughs> well, we're going to have to revisit this when we get to the 90%, right? Right now we're only at 60 and so we're we're guessing that that's coming in, or do you already have the numbers for the ninety percent? The ninety percent number will be in in two weeks, um, it, uh, and so that the at the moment we do not we we do not know what that number is. That's so it number. could be more, it could be less. We could be putting all this right back in, and have extra room for more playroom. Equipment. 
Do we need to make this decision? I mean, I know we need, I know we need, we can't take this an, as an alternate. Um, do we need to make this before we get the 90% estimate back? Can we push this particular decision until the next meeting when we have the cost estimate? I, I mean, it's easier for us to leave it in now and just keep drawing and, and, and just, and just keep it in yep. now. It's, e it's easier for us to take it out than it is yes. for us to add it later. Okay. And so, so it's, and I was, so I'm looking back at last month's presentation. It looks like with, with leaving this in, with leaving the East end, the East end, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, we are, have the, the VE total we're estimating is 883, 883,000. Correct. Um, so if we were to take this out, it would just add another 60 to that. So we'd be at um, 940-ish, I think. It sounds like we should leave it in for now because I do think that there's we're still not quite um, to a consensus. And I also think that we're not sure what we'll get when we get the 90%. So I, okay. I suggest we leave it in with the drawings and we punt it to next month. Is everyone okay with that? I agree. Yeah, May, I would agree because I think we're going to revisit this process because once we get the 9% set one, we're going to see, do we actually realize some of the savings that we thought we were going to realize and how does that budget look? And then at that point, you'll know, Hey, we accomplished what we wanted to accomplish, or we still have somewhat of an issue we feel or whatever. And then you could re revisit this. I don't, and I, and I agree with Rob taking it out is much easier. They just remove these specific details versus having to add specific details for this feature later on. Okay. All right. So okay. it looks like we leave it in for now. Um, and we move forward. We'll revisit. All right. All right. Um, so just, uh, I don't know, Brian, do you want to walk through these slides? Yeah. So this slide just represents, I think, where we, where we left off at the last meeting, kind of a recap from the last meeting. We had talked about moving the, the kind of a hodgepodge of landscape items to an alternate. We had tabled the playground decision. It sounds like that's not going to go to an alternate. Um, we had talked about moving the chain link fencing around the soccer field as an alternate. And then we had two previously identified items as alternates, the UV addition to the HVAC equipment um, and the additional landscaping, kind of a phase two of landscape plantings. Uh, so those are the four that were determined uh, last meeting to be the scope of alternates uh, with an estimated price tag associated with them. And then the landscape was, uh, the playground equipment was to be determined. So today we determined that that's not going to move to an alternate. So the objective for today, then, if, if we're in agreement that these four are still the alternates and the relative value, uh, we do need to alter these. I mean, excuse me, we do need to order these. Um, and that the order will be placed into the bid documents. The bidders will then provide pricing. Uh, they'll provide a base scope, and then they'll provide broken out costs for each of these. Um, so when we get the final bids, uh, we will see the base cost of the project without alternates. We'll see the price of alternate number one, two, three, four, et cetera. Um, and the district and the town, you do need to accept the alternates in order. Um, so whatever is number one uh, would have to be accepted. If you also, if you really, if you had the budget and wanted to get to number three, you would have to accept one, two, and three. You just couldn't cherry pick and take number three. Um, so the priority um, and the ordering uh, does matter. Um, so what we need today is really how do we want to order those because they will go in the bid documents in that order. They'll be identified as alternate number one, alternate number two, et cetera, and the bids will reflect that uh, accordingly. Is, um, Brian, is, that a, is that a public bidding law that, that has to be ordered? Yes. Yes. Great. Um, one clarification that at the moment that uh, the, the team is proposing to do these as an add alternate, not deduct alternates. Correct. Right. So, yeah, so these will be add alternates. So the way I explained it was we will get um, any any contractor that has scope associated with these alternates. So the general contractor most likely will have some type of scope, either managing or, or hiring a subcontractor to do it. Uh, but for instance, the uh, HVAC subcontractor will also in his bid provide a price. We'll have a base bid for the building. You know, if, if HVAC is number one, then he'll have the cost associated with the HVAC UV system. So um, they all will be added to the kind of their base scope. And then on bid day, we will be able to select alternates if they fit within budget. 
and kind of cobble together a total price for the project. So there'll be add alternates that will not be reducing the cost of the base bid. And I think one thing to think about is that when we're deciding what order to put them in, there's a number of, of considerations, right? First, we need to think about which ones are most important to get into the project, because as Brian said, um, you take them in the order you, you order them. Um, but also, you know, if you take your most expensive one first, um, like let's say you add the phase two landscaping plantings, then you're going to have to come up with $245,000 before you get to the second or the third one. So you also need to think about the cost of the alternate itself, um, because if you want to take, you know, an, another one behind it, you can't use up all your money, you know, all, you, you can't sort of it's going to be harder the more money you spend up front to get to the back alternates is what I'm trying to say. Right. That's a good um, point, man. So, so for instance, say the, say the base bid of the whole project, you know, we're shooting for $70 million and the whole base bid comes in $300,000 under, right? So we have room to accept alternates. So you accept, you can accept up to $300,000 and still be quote unquote on budget. Um, so that would definitely come into play. The other thing to think about is if for some reason we're not able to accept all the alternates and we have to kind of table them, to see if we could add them later in the project, which ones would we be able to add later relatively easily and possibly later in the project when we have a better sense of what the contingency looks like versus um, something that we might need to do earlier. Cause it's, you know, for example, UV is part of the HVAC equipment, which is a long lead item, which would be part of submittals earlier in the project versus chain link fencing, which is something you could do possibly at the very end when the fields are done. So those are other things that come into, into play as well. And I would say that UV is, is is one item that if, uh, if we don't take it, we cannot put, uh, if you don't take it, you it's very, it's almost impossible to put it back and still stay on schedule. Um, whereas the, the three remaining item, uh, because they're mostly uh, landscape related, um, they, they happen at a much later time, um, later in terms of the time in the construction. So that if you have at the later part of this uh, uh, construction, that the contingency money is healthy, you could choose to take them and then there will be no impact to the project schedule. Are any of these likely to cost more as alternates than in the base bid? Any thoughts on that? It's a function of uh, sometimes that the TC would try to more aggressively bid it one way or another, and but it's a little hard to guess that. Yeah. Yeah, Brian. I mean, it 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 varies in every project, and sometimes that's where a subcontractor or a GC might sharpen their pencil more to kind of just you know duck under what they think the others are going to price that at. You know, that's where they would be willing to take the you know the risk to be the low bidder type of thing. So, I mean, it's it's hard to tell. It does vary in every project. Yeah, I, I would agree. It, it seems to go back after the fact and add one or two things. It's yeah, they're not going to have that buying power, and it, it's going to be I would expect to be more more expensive. Although at bid time, we will know based on the estimates whether they seem to be fair prices or or not. That's right. So one of the if for some reason, so for example, if you don't accept one of these as an alternate and a year into the project, we decide to add it via change order. Um, when they submit the change order pricing, we already have the you know, pricing that they submitted at bid time, which you know should line up. But obviously, we're still reviewing the change order kind of by itself. But we do have a gauge of you know what they price that out at bid time. So um, you know we have the usual you know usual arguments of oh, it's volume price or whatever. But we'll still have an idea of like this change order should be in this ballpark. It, it, uh, the other question I had, you know, it looks like the occupancy permit would, you know, the, the, the three of them really want to matter the landscaping. And I would just imagine adding that UV to the HVAC would be the only one that might uh, be in contention with an occupancy permit. Is that correct? It, it's not necessary to have the UV because that's, a, <clears throat> that's not a required item for the occupancy permit. But rather the H, uh, the but the whole HVAC system has to be operational. So if we delay that, then yes, that uh, so 
It's not yeah. the UV, but it's the HVAC. Correct. Part. It's part of the HVAC, and yep. you're not right. signing off on the whole. Correct. Uh, or paying for the whole system if it's not done. Yeah, I agree. Right. Thanks. Can you just remind me with the chain link fencing around the field? Is there still going to be fencing on Gay Street, or is this all chain link fencing? So this is this is this specific line item is the fencing around the multi-purpose field or on the soccer field um, only. Um, and <clears throat> again, the the decision is not to leave it out or not include it at all. It, you know, the, there's full intention to have it in the project no matter what. Um, the idea here is is simply to have it as a buffer on bid day. It's an it's you know adding a chain link fence is. It's one of the easiest things to um, to add later. Yeah, I think, and that raises a good point. So, I, I'm I myself am struggling to wrap my head around the, the concept of an alternate because to me it sort of seems like, you know, you may not ever be able to put these in the project. But what I'm hearing from the team is that most likely, certainly, you know, the first couple of things will get in the project. Um, so if we have them sort of in the order that we see them, the UV will get into the project, the chain link will get into the project. They're just not in there on bid day, but there's enough of a buffer. We expect, we fully expect that with between the, the estimates or contingency or whatever, we'll be able to get those. The, the, you know, the question is, is they get more expensive? How much of that can we take? But um, is, that, is that right, Brian? Would you agree that the yeah, first, I mean, at least the first on... couple? Yeah, I, I mean, our experience is that these types of projects and the way that the MSBA and we set them up, the contingencies are, are usually very healthy, um, that we end up having some leftover funds at the end of these projects that the owner decides to add whatever it is, whether it was an alternate or not even an alternate, they decide to you know buy more furniture or whatever it is, they have that, they have that ability because you have leftover funds in your contingency. The, the risk, though, is that if you put everything into your base scope, that comes in over budget on bid day. Technically the project could still be on budget, but now we're talking about reducing our contingency to cover the overage of the bid on day one. And we haven't done any work yet. And you have all the risks associated with construction, like the ledge, like getting out of the ground, all of those things that the contingencies are designed for is now that the contingency is lowered. So the, the, the point of an alternate is to give you some of that flexibility. If they come in low, you take them all and you still have your contingencies intact. If the bids come in high, you make a decision to table some of them. There's still all these alternates are still drawn in full in documents. Like the documents are still going to show the chain link fence. They're still going to show the additional plantings. They're just going to be labeled as an alternate. Um, and then as you move through the project and risk starts to come down, and you realize that hey, we're going to have you know we we project we're going to have additional funds in contingency. Let's add the chain link fencing at the end of the day. The fencing contractor won't even be on site until the last you know couple months of the project realistically. So you have a lot of time to get to that decision point. So that's really the, the purpose of an alternate is to give you that flexibility on bid day to keep your construction, but your construction bid within your construction budget so that you're not taking from other aspects of your budget to cover any overages. And, and just, just to follow up on that, to Chin's point, um, really the, the primary decision on bid day um, <clears throat> is the UV. So either, you know, at bid day, either that's in or it's out. Um, that's not something that you would want to add later on uh, because it would be number one, very difficult in terms of timing and logistics to get that integrated at a later point in time. So, so that's really the primary item that, you know, you really need to, to make a decision on bid day. Is that in or out? The other items, um, as Brian mentioned, can be added later. So these are the, so remember we had added the UV and the phase two landscape plantings or way earlier in the process as alternates. When we, when we were discussing the HVA system, I think is when we added the UV. And when we were looking at the budget, we, that's when we pulled out, remember we reduced the landscape by 50%. Um, so I guess the question is, are these still alternates we want to include? Um, and I'm just going to take them one at a time. Do we still want the UV to be an alternate? Do we want to remove it from the project entirely? Um, it, it will have to be, I think, from what I'm hearing is that if we want it as an alternate, it will have to be one or two, number one or number two. 
otherwise there's no point in even including it. Well, because we, we, we wouldn't get to it on day one. Um, so do people still want the UV? I do. I still want the UV. If we come up with another worldwide pandemic, this is the only thing that's going to protect everybody in the thing. Now, if I'm understanding Brian correct, and from previous experience, that when this goes out to bid, they put in how much it's going to cost and how much it's not. And that's when we can decide to, to scrub it. That's right. We'll get we'll get it on bid day, or actually when we well, get it doesn't need to come out today, but on bid right, day. But remember, the problem is, John, if we put this as number one and we yeah. say we don't want it, we can't get anything else on the list. On bid no. day. On bid day. On yeah. bid day. Right. So, so just to be clear, right now we're at 60%. In two weeks, we'll be at 90%. That all the bids will come in. Then the bids that we accept, that is actually going to be the number that we're going to have to deal with. And we're going to have to revisit all this at that time. But in order for them to put the bid in for the RFQ, uh, request for quote, that this has to be in there as an alternate so that you can see how much it's going to cost if it's in there or not. And then you, right. as the owner, we get to make the decision whether we want to, if it's within our budget or not. Right. But and we need to keep this in there for them to bid on. Yeah, so it needs to be identified as an alternate. If we want to see it separated as a price to make a decision on bid day, it needs to be identified as an alternate. You do need to then order your alternates um, so they're all priced in the same um, sequence. And per bid laws, you then have to accept the alternates on bid, bid day in that sequence. So in theory, your number one priority should be your, your first your first alternate, the one you think would be hardest to add later would be, should be your first alternate. Um, I have a question. Yeah. I don't remember, it's been a while since we've talked about the UV and the HVAC systems. And I don't remember if we talked about any downsides to installing this. I don't see, you know, I think for things like the landscape builders or the landscape planting, some of the other alternates here, it's like clear upside only, but with the UV on HVAC, I had, and I'm not at all an expert on this, so I defer to the ones who were in looking at, at this as a decision point. I had heard some mixed feelings from schools that were looking at this in the midst of the pandemic. Those would be retrofit, so that's a different challenge. Maybe it's easier when installing it upfront, but I don't know if, there, if we know of any downside to installing UV, even for example, on the maintenance side of the system, for example, if we have these, this capacity in our HVAC systems, does it make it at all more difficult to maintain the system? I think the, the go ahead, Robert. I was gonna say, um, so one element of it is that with the UV, elements, it kind of cleans the, the air conditioning side of things um, and, and maintains that in a, in, a, in a better condition. On the downside, it is more equipment. It is more bulbs and other, you know, parts and pieces that are integrated into the system. And it's one more, you know, piece that does need to get, you know, maintained and looked after. Um, so, so it's not run 100% of the time. It's only run when you need it. Right. When everything's closed up January and February, when all the kids are the little bio factories are sneezing and snot, it kills all the germs. <laughs> well, I mean, when a whole first grade disappears because they, you know, one kid's yep. sick, this stops that. Well, I don't, I don't know how it mitigate it. It helps mitigate it, yeah. It, it helps it, yeah. Stops right. it, huh, John? That's quite a claim. <laughs> uh, instead of 100% of the kids missing, it's only, you know, 10 or 12%. Mm -hmm. so, so for clarification that uh, the, the system that uh, Lord Whittier had Propose is actually one of the best ones because the air from one uh, classroom one uh, never mixed with classroom two because they're all independently uh, set up. And so that the, if you have a kid sneeze in, in first grade, they will never go up, get mixed to any, any other uh, rooms. And then so the, so that I, I don't want to have any impression that the base system is, uh, is, is not good and that's why we're doing this. Uh, so I just want for clarification. We're going from good to really good. Yeah, that, that, that is. Yeah. Yes. I uh, to agree. add to this, I, it's, it sounds like we're, you know, in the last couple of minutes have said, yeah, this UV system is a good thing for us to have. I think it is smart to have this as an alternate because um, it gives us the wiggle room that I think we are probably going to need. And I put it as first because when you look at the other the other things on here, um, you know, Brian gave you two criteria. 
on, on why you had alternate. And one is it's very, very important. And two is that it's, um, you know, you got to consider whether you can add it later. And when you look at the other things that we're considering for alternates, those are things that are very simple to add after the fact, as we get toward the end things. This UV, it's a go, no go on, on bid day. Um, this is not something six months in, we're going to go ahead and say, oh gosh, let's add that. It's, that's not going to happen. So I, I, I think we ought to have an alternate, and I, and I do think it is in the right position as first. It, it, I would agree on that. My experience in, of adding that after the fact, it's never, it, it's, it, it's always more challenging, more expensive. And, you know, you want to get it in and you want it designed for the system that was, it, it was designed for, not after the fact a year or two later. Yep. I have one question. Um, when, when we're looking at this list, it seems to me we took, well, we were talking about taking out two feet, eight inches of the gym. Is that no longer on this list or is that? That was a value engineering yes. um, item. So that's okay. been, that was already taken. We've already done that. I'm just making sure. Yep. That wasn't an alternate. John, that's part of that 800 some thousand that may have um, yeah. talked about earlier. Yeah. So we'll see if we realize that on the 90% uh, estimate. Yeah. That was part of what the geothermal from 80 wells to 60, correct? Yeah, although yeah, that was, wasn't really value engineering. Correct. That was, um, it correct. was sort of mislabeled, right? That was really yeah, just the designer coming back and saying, we've 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 done further analysis and this is what we think you need. So, Recategorize right. that, correct. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like we have people are talking about adding UV to HVAC as number one. Does anybody disagree with that? Nope, I'm hearing nothing. Okay, I would propose chain link fencing around the field as number two. Um, you know, right now, it's it's in the drawings having this this fence around the, the multi-purpose field, the soccer field. I do think we need it because we don't want balls going onto Gay Street. Um, given the nature of it, I think it does make sense to leave it as an alternate. But I really want to take it, <laughs> so that's why I would propose that as number two. I agree with that, Maya. Yeah, this is, I mean, these all look good and in the right order. I think so too. Okay, does anyone have any comments about leaving the three and four? I think it makes sense putting four, putting phase two as four, it's the biggest amount. You can always add plantings. Um, and three, it would be nice to have that stuff in there before the plantings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agree. I agree. Okay, um, any more discussion on this order? Nope. All right. We're going to go to action items. Um, the first one is the vote on the shading element. I'm going to hold on that because we are punting that to next month. The second one is voting on the order of the alternates. So I will need a motion to, um, to, I need someone to make a motion. I'd like to, to propose that we keep the alternates in order as we see right here in the bid alternates, Perfect. the UV to the HVAC, then the chain link fence and the landscaping, then phase two. Second. All right. Um, roll call. Ken. Yes. Josh. Yes. Brian. Yes. Yes. Allison. Yes. Tom. Yes. Chris. Yes. John. Yes. Charlie. Yes. Mary Kate. Yes. Jen. Yes. Abby. Yes. Lemma. Yes. Matt. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Emily. Yes. Amanda. Yes. And Mike. Yes. All right, and I'm a yes, motions carry. Um, next item, vote to remove insulation from proprietary item list. Um, this is the insul, just backing up a little bit to give some context here. Um, Originally, we had the insulation um, as a proprietary item. Uh, just to remind everybody, typically we would like we don't want things to be proprietary, right? Proprietary means that we've specified a specific item, uh, a specific source from a specific vendor, a specific product, and that we would purchase that product without sort of you know market forces at work, right? Without going to 
to get bids and figuring out what might be the, the most uh, reasonable option. And we do that for things that are very specific that we don't think we can find, you know, multiple varieties of. And Brian, please, please or Chin, someone <laughs> tell me if I'm speaking wrong. But that's what a, a proprietary item is. We don't like to do that typically because, as you can tell, you're not you're sort of ignoring the market and you're really kind of held hostage to the to the vendor that you've spec'd as proprietary. Um, but we do that, as I said, for specific things. So we had done that for the insulation. Um, I think some of us, uh, especially on this committee, may have gotten emails regarding the insulation product. Um, there was some question about it. So the team looked into the product itself further. And in connection with looking into the product, they realized that it did, actually, did not actually have to be a proprietary item. There were alternates. Um, so the team is now proposing to remove that item for, as proprietary and to, um, and to just kind of include it as a, include insulation as a, as a general item, a non-proprietary item. Um, to do that, we would need a vote from this board because it had been proprietary. Um, and is that, am I missing anything, Rob or Brian or Chin or anyone? I, I would just add that, um... We've actually changed the the insulation system of the of the exterior wall. So um, previously, we had planned to go with just a continuous, you know, rigid insulation on the outside of the wall. Um, in this scenario, we've we've changed the the actual product uh, material itself, and um, we'll be adding some insulation to the in between the stud cavity to to supplement it. Um, that particular product had a higher R value, and we, that's why we were trying to. Um, keep it on the outside, but by doing this alternate approach, it opens it up to uh, a number of different manufacturers that can um, provide costing and the price of that, um, you know, uh, of, of that is probably in the, in the same similar kind of ballpark um, as, as what we had previously specified. So um, we feel that this is a good move. Um, it makes sense to do. Yeah. And we are, as I said, our preference is not to do proprietary. So this aligns with that goal. May, I think um, you did a great explanation. And thanks to Ed and Rob. Uh, one of the other benefits is that in the long term, it is going to generally be more flexible and cheaper for the school to maintain the building. And, and that's a huge issue in terms of long term uh, pricing and maintenance of the building. Uh, as to why to avoid proprietary items when we can. So it makes sense, we got to do it, but if we can avoid it, that's great, so. Great, thanks, Michelle. Um, all does right, that, so. Does that particular look, brand remain in the specification or not? And was there any safety issue based on the research? No, uh, you know, based on our research as we had been, you know, we had, we had done, um, lots of investigation into all the materials and it met all of the NFPA 285 requirements and testing requirements. Um, so we had no issue with that. Um, it is, it, it's not being included in our specifications. Um, like I said, we're, we're kind of switching to a different uh, thermal envelope system altogether. So um, we're basically going with the XPS uh, insulation, rigid insulation on the outside and then um, some fiberglass bat in between the studs. Any other questions or comments on this? Okay, so as I said, I will need a motion to remove insulation from the proprietary item list. Anyone so want to give me? I'll make a move. I'll make a motion that we move uh, from any proprietary insulation off the list. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, any dis any further discussion on this? All right. Ken. Uh, yes. Josh? Yes. Brian? Yes. Allison? Yes. Tom? Yes. Chris? Yes. John? Yes. Charlie? Yes. Mary Kate? Yes. Jen? Yes. Abby? Yes. Lemma? Yes. Matt? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Emily? Yes. Amanda? 
Yes. Mike? Yes. All right, motion is carried. Um, so next is a vote to approve the meeting minutes of February 11th, 2022. We do have, sorry, February 11th, yeah, 2022. We do have one change um, under the chair's report, permanent building committee membership update. There's a sentence that says the PBC has seven voting members with Maya Plotkin as a temporary voting member only for the Deerfield Hanlon project. Um, Emily Parks, Brian Bayer and Michael Walsh will be ex officio. That should read Mike, Michael Powers. Um, that was just a, Mike is, <laughs> Mike, Mike Walsh, Walsh already does too, uh, enough for the town. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Mike's off the hook for this one. Um, so there's that one change. That doesn't um, happen too often. <laughs> <laughs> um, does anyone else have any comments to the minutes? No? Okay, can I get a motion to approve the meeting minutes of February 11th, 2022 as amended just now, as I just explained? So moved. Can I get second. a second? All right, Ken. Yes. Josh. Yes. Brian. Yes. Allison. Yes. Tom. Yes. Chris. Yes. John. Yes. Charlie. Yes. Mary Kate. Yes. Jen. Yes. Abby. Yes. Lemma. Yes. Matt. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Emily. Yes. Amanda. Yes. And Mike. Yes, especially since I'm off the hook, yeah. Since you're off the hook, yes. All right, great, motion is carried. Okay, uh, next is a vote to approve the payment of invoices totaling $371,428. Those constitute, oh, two cents. Uh, those constitute a compass uh, bill for $28,000 uh, monthly bill. Um, another compass bill for other administrative costs for $7,700. And then Doran Whittier, construction cost of $334,471 and other basic services for $1,257.02. So can I get a motion to approve those invoices? So move. Second. Any discussion? Okay, Ken? Yes. Josh? Yes. Brian? Yes. Allison? Yes. Tom? Yes. Chris? Yes. John? Yes. Charlie? Yes. Mary Kate? Yes. Jen? Yes. Abby? Yes. Lemma? Yes. Matt? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Emily? Yes. Amanda? Yes. And Mike? Yes. All right, motion's carried. Is there any new business anyone would like to raise? All right, hearing none, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second. Okay, Ken? Yes. Josh? Yes. Brian? Yes. Allison? Yes. Tom? Is Tom still here? He just pulled off. Okay. Chris? Yes. John? Yes. Charlie? Yes. Mary Kate? Yes. Jen? Yes. Abby? Yes. Lemma? Yes. Matt? Yes. Matt. Uh, Michelle? Yes. Emily? Yes. Mike? Tom's back. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> All right. Tom Z. Yes. Mike Walsh. Okay. Amanda. Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm a yes too. So motion is carried. We are adjourned. <laughs> All right. Have a good weekend, Thank everyone. everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a